Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Today we got something special. Just finished up a crosscut sled. I'm practicing my veneering skills and I'm gonna show you how to make this today. So please stay tuned. So we started the day with a walk over near the local park. We live in northern New Jersey and this is the Muskinetcon River. Terrific trout stream. So I really got started in veneering several months ago with my buddy Craig Newton. And this hobby is actually very simple to do. With a little bit of an imagination and not too many tools, all you really need to do is cut up some strips of different colored woods. You can see here I'm just using that right piece of wood in order to get a straight edge and then a, a divider piece and then cutting it. And you can cut it with either that utility knife, an X-Acto knife, or the veneer saw that you see there uh, right next to the brush. So you make a bunch of different strips, pick different colors, different widths. And from there, we're going to go on to cutting up some triangles. The triangles are easily made with a paper guillotine. So once you tape the strips together, then you make these triangles. You can see I've got a 45 degree piece of wood on there to help make the miter cuts. So again, this is just mixing and matching colors and widths. And here I'm putting together the first square. Of course, you get a square with four triangles. Here I've added some borders. And this is new for me. I have not used borders before, but it really adds a lot to the designs. So, not a big deal. You just cut these shapes and you know, you're off to the races. Then you have to tape the four pieces together, obviously. And here are a couple of the examples of what they look like once I'm done that part of the process. So the blue is a really nice feature. It's the first time I've used blue. And here's some mixing and matching of borders and colors. As you can see, this is pretty spectacular looking. And here's some of the uh, designs. I'm just playing around with them, see how they look. Uh, there's another one. This is quite a bit of fun. I would suggest that you have not tried this. See if you can find somebody who does marquetry in your area and maybe they can help you get started. So once I had the four designs that I wanted to use, I needed to put the field together. So this is a wood called Tino, which I'm really not familiar with, but Craig had a whole bunch of it. So I'm just cutting up some pieces and now I'm laying them out on the piece of plywood that I'm going to use for the crosscut sled. So you notice this is a book match color on the Tino. You see some of it's darker and some of it's lighter in the middle part of the field there. And I'm just experimenting where to put the different design patterns. Once you have the designs, then you have to cut out the shape of the design onto the Tino. And the way that you do that is you just put some uh, tape around the main design and then very carefully cut around it with either an X-Acto knife, a scalpel, a razor blade, something like that. So here I'm just demonstrating how I cut out the, uh, the piece behind the design. And you need to do this in order that the design pattern fits flush with the uh, Tino. So that piece is fitting pretty well and then I got to do it three more times. Here's another pattern, a little bit closer shot. And I'm using one of these little razor blade knives and this was very sharp and I changed the blade on this uh, after every pattern that I cut out. You want to make sure this is very sharp when you're doing this. It makes the cutting much easier. Here I'm getting ready to make the black borders around each piece. 
I think it looks a lot better with the border so there was some separation of the four different main patterns so again I'm using that two inch wide piece of wood a piece of t-track in order to measure the spacing of the black and then I'm cutting it here I'm using the veneer saw and I'm cutting this on a piece of uh, masonite uh, you really should be doing a piece of masonite or a piece of plywood so obviously you're not cutting into your good workbench top and here's what it's looking like So once I was satisfied with all the design and I had all the tape on, I took it over to Craig's to use his vacuum bag. Uh, we glued the substrate and here we're putting the design in the bag. That's uh, Craig's buddy Joe. He is also a, another furniture restorer. So in order to prepare for the vacuum, we have to put this uh, white and blue tubes assembly together and that makes it all airtight and from there we have to connect the vacuum pump the vacuum pump is the most expensive part of the veneering process uh, all the other tools are relatively inexpensive most of them under twenty dollars but you do need a vacuum pump and the vacuum bag which that can run into several hundred dollars so here we're just flattening out the pattern with a veneering hammer and that just helps get a better grip onto the glue. So overall this is looking uh, pretty decent. As a matter of fact I like it a lot. And you might be wondering why I spent all that time and effort making a crosscut sled. And the real reason for that is I wanted to make some designs for some upcoming jewelry boxes. And I wanted to experiment with some of the designs. So this is really more of a sampler project. So I needed to mill up some wood for the front and the back rail. And I had this old shelf that was about two inches thick. So I'm just milling it to thickness and width with my table saw and my planer. So this part went pretty fast. This is a grizzly planer. It's got a helical head and it's great. So one of the other reasons I chose this wood is because it's pine and it was very light and I wanted to keep the overall weight low. Here I'm using a round over bit and I'm rounding over three of the edges. So I wanted the two top edges to be smoothed at a touch and the bottom edge so that it can collect sawdust underneath it and not be a straight right angle. Here I'm putting on a little bit of red stain. This is the reddest stain I had and really wasn't enough. I ended up putting some dye in it. I ended up cutting some strips. This is that ultra high density plastic. And in order to get that situated, I put some washers in the rail slots. And then from there, I'm going to put the runners in there, as you can see here. And I've got my CA glue at the ready. And actually, I think this would have worked a little bit better with double-sided tape, and I just don't know where my double-sided tape is right now. So I globbed on some, this is some um, gap-filling CA glue. And ran that down each piece. So again, you can either, either use double-sided tape or CA glue. If you're using wood runners, you know, again, you could use either one of those. And a little bit of accelerator, and then placing the sled onto the two runners. Those runners are dead nuts. They are fit so well, there's no play. And that's what you really want. You want no play in between those runners. So here I'm just placing the plastic rails onto the bottom of the sled. Just countersinking there and just drilled them all in. I think I used six or seven screws on each one. Here I'm getting ready to put on the back rail. And this one is not as critical. It doesn't have to be perfectly square. But all I really did is lined it up against the back edge of the 
plywood and then I went and finished it up with some screws and here's the moment of truth and there's all kind of ways to square up the sled but since I had that round over on the bottom inside of that I just uh, used a square I use a triangle square a 30 60 square and I pinned a small piece of wood back there to make sure that was nice and tight and then from there I just put in eight screws across the bottom of that and here I'm doing a test cut so I did not bother with the five cut method which a lot of people do and I wanted to try this first so I'm making the cut so just a piece of scrap plywood and I'm grabbing a square So I wanted to see how accurate I am here. And I'm lining up the square and voila, there is no light between the square and the plywood. So I'm gonna call this good. I broke out my Earl X sprayer and I put probably about 10 coats of shellac on the top and about four or five coats on the bottom. And I finished that off with some wax. So I get a very nice smooth surface across the table saw. This worked out really well. So regular viewers of my channel know when you're putting on the finish, I call this the money shot. So it's all sanded, it's nice and smooth, and I'm starting to put the shellac on. And I just love when the finish goes on because it just makes the wood colors and the grain just pop right out. And so I love it and I did a double pattern going left to right and up and down and that yeah, worked out really good Again, just a few more coats and this is coat from this is the first time I've used my Earl X in several years so it's fun breaking that one off you'll notice I did put a safety block at the front of the sled and you put that on there so that you don't accidentally have your hand there as you're bringing the sled across the saw. That would be a bad thing. And here's the finished product. I got my Jonathan Katz Moses stop block on there and the T-Track and that is a fantastic stop block. So that's the basic process steps in order to make a crosscut sled. Obviously I kind of went over the top making this but again I was practicing and uh, I think it came out pretty good. So, hey, you know the drill. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you on another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Bye-bye.